Hey, Dawn. Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday. I have no idea what day it is. It's sometime in April 2022 here at Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. And uh, if you've been watching me, you know we've got a new studio set up here. And uh, with the new studio came a new iron. Oh, just thrills my heart to have a new iron. The old iron kind of was old and uh, decrepity and wasn't getting as hot as it should anymore. So I went out on the floor and I got one that was just like the one that we had. And I want to tell you a little bit about when you get a new iron, what you maybe should do. I like to write the date on the box so I know when I got it. That's always nice, don't you think? And then this other stuff is just for the shop. But then you open the box where you read and make sure that it does. it's going to do what you want it to do. Do you want one that steams? Do you want one that doesn't steam? Do you want one that shuts off automatic? Do you want one that doesn't shut off automatic? And I don't know about you, but there's all these things in here to read. Does anybody read them? Nobody reads no. them? No. Okay. User manual. Good thing to read. Uh Here's a little thing that you can put on your phone. Uh, on turn the camera on. Put this like in a in the frame of the camera, and and uh, a little website will pop up and talk to you all about the iron. It'll probably tell you all that that's in this book if you don't want to read. And then it's got this foam stuff, and I just kept all that in there. Because what if something happens in a week or two and the iron stops working? Well, I'm going to send it back. So I'm going to save my box somewhere safe where I know where it is. Unless somebody wants to borrow it and not bring it back. Just saying. This iron comes with a little cup because it is a steam iron. If it's got holes in the bottom like this, it's a steam iron. Steam comes out of it. So this particular iron, Oliso, Oliso, is that how you say it, Peter? Mm -hmm. Oliso, and it's pretty. You get your choice of uh, pink, turquoise, or yellow, or purple. Why is it on hydraulics? Uh, because if you don't, if when you touch the handle, it gets ready to iron, oh. and if you let go, it it pops up so it doesn't burn your fabric. Oh, okay. Isn't that pretty cool? Wow, that's fancy. Yeah, you got to get used to it though. Because I'm not really used to it. Ooh. Okay? But, yeah. You got a new toy, Dawn. Yeah, yeah. As long as you uh, hold the handle, it stays up. I mean, let go of the handle, it stays up. If you hold the handle, then it goes down. But you open this little trap door here, and that's where you can pour in the water. All right? And it's got a max line. Most every uh, iron has a maximum line that you fill it. But what I want to talk to you about is a lot of irons come with a card, a warranty card. That you, and evidently I've already filled mine out and sent it along. Uh, that you wanna send it into the company in case something does happen to your iron. This iron is not cheap. This iron is $300. Okay, okay. $300 iron. $300 nice. iron. Ah! That's a lot of money for an iron. So first of all, you wanna take care of it. So another good reason to you to uh, read the user's manual because how many people out there think that all irons need to be filled with distilled water? What do you think, Peter? Think 50% of the people think that it should be distilled water in all irons? Okay, we're asking about what I th what we think and not what we do, right? Right, what we think people most people put in their iron, distilled water. Yes, distilled. Right. Yes. No. No, don't do it. Well, no, Why you got to read you got to read your manual. This is one of those non-distilled irons? This iron says, "Do not do not put distilled water in this iron." Oh. I can't keep up with these. I know, these newfangled these rules. These new things. New things. So it's always important to understand what your, what your iron likes and what it doesn't like. This iron likes tap water or it likes drinking water. So if you want to buy water, you can just buy a bottle of water that you drink okay. and it can do that. Dawn, can that if in. I'm spending $300 on my iron, yeah. I'm only going to put bottled spring water in it. Okay. Bottled spring water. Okay. From well, France. And that would be okay with this with this particular iron. 
But some irons might Maybe want sparkling this. water. Maybe. Don't try that. I wouldn't try that. It did not say sparkling water. No carbonation necessary, Peter. You'll have bubbles all over your fabric when you steam. Nothing but bubbles. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But anyway, it goes, it, it tells you all about, you know, everything that comes with the iron and everything the iron does and special instructions on, you know, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So it's always easy. I mean, it's always good to read that. But let's say you've had the iron for a year or two and you've, or never, ten. And you've never cleaned it. Or ten. Or ten. And you've never cleaned it. I have one of these. You can get these at the hardware store, I think, for a dollar. It's just a, a china bristle brush, one of those real cheap ones, you mm. know? It's hog bristle. Yeah. And so what I do is about once a week, I come in here, and you want to do this when the iron's off, okay? The, my iron's on right now, but, oh. uh, but try and do this when the iron's off, especially if you're using a natural bristle brush. Uh, and you want to clean it right in between here because that's where all the dust bunnies want to hide. So you get in there and you dust all that off and you dust your iron. The iron is the dustiest thing in the, in the sewing room, do you think, Peter? I didn't know until I saw you dust your iron that you how dusty even... it was. Yeah. Yes. The iron gets really, really dusty. And so it, you need to take care of your iron, especially if you're going to spend $300 on it. Uh, if you get one of those $20 ones at Walmart, hey, some people, $20 is just as much as $300, you know, depending on your budget. And I'm not saying that you have to have a $300 iron. I'm saying get you an iron that does what you want it to do and take care of it is so my So are you saying take care of your what you do have? What you do have, it needs to be taken care of, Yes. Because my $300 or your $300 or somebody else's $300 might be, you know, a $20 to somebody else is what I'm saying. Their budget. They, you know, you got to live within your budget. So you're saying I can do with my $10 iron what you're doing with your $300 iron. Yeah, probably uh, the big difference is, is it's going to have little, uh, you know, like, does your iron do this? No, mine, no. Did, mine did not come with hydraulics. No, no. I think that's maybe why this iron is so expensive is because maybe it has this technology. Mine has one knob. One knob, high. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it has, a, it has a, a steam and then it has a squirt. You know, if you just want to add spray, water, yeah. a spray right spray. there is where the sprayer comes out. Like if out. your cat gets on your fabric Ooh, project, yeah, you, can you spray can him. spray him to get off. <laughs> Ooh, it would be really hot, Peter. Wait, the water's not hot, is it? Yes! Oh, the don't do that. Super hot. Yeah, I thought it was cold. No, 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 no. The water sits in here and is hot. Uh, oh, don't do it's that. It's heated in yeah, there. Don't, yeah, don't spray don't do anybody, that. any don't animals, be nothing. Anything. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, I always set my iron like at cotton because I'm uh, I'm a quilter and I use only cotton fabrics. Now, if I'm using interfacing or something like that, that is got polyester in it or some batting or something that I'm ironing on, like fusible stuff. First of all, when I use fusible stuff, I am always using either a pressing cloth or something over the fusible so that I don't get the base of my iron sticky, gummy, gooey gross. That was okay. a beautiful plate on the on that well, iron. Well, it's brand new. It just came out of the Is that box. a non-slick? Like, I think it is a non... It's a diamond fancy. ceramic flow. Another wow. reason why it's $300. Don't touch it. I'm just trying to see. Yeah, that's warm. Yeah. You can feel the heat from right here. Yeah, it's here. hot. It's a hot iron. It's a hot tamale. And uh, the reason I have it on these little... Uh, you don't need it on these little gel things but i have those gel things yeah. so i just put them i think on it's there. smart to have a barrier yeah because there's still heat coming from that plate. there is heat coming from the plate but this is the number i mean dusting is a good thing especially between the plate and the uh, iron a body the body of the iron and the plate needs to be dusted once a week at least okay and then the most important thing I'm going to tell you, and Peter is going to roll his eyes. I think I already did. I think he already did roll his eyes a couple times. But never, never, ever, ever leave water in your iron. If you want your iron to last and be a good iron for the rest of its life, it needs to be water-free. 
So wait. When you're not using it, dump out the water. Go ahead, Peter. What? So wait. So so don't keep it hydrated. Do not keep it hydrated. My um, my iron at home is a is a steam station. No, the water stays in a tank, and only water it goes through it is when I push the button. And then it backs the water back okay, out. Okay, I'm starting to believe you since you said that because yeah. I've seen those. They exist like a tailor shop. They have this long tube yes. in a reservoir that the water stays in. Yes. The water is not staying in their iron. Their water is not in their iron. Okay, you're credible. Okay, thank you. I believe it now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so I think that's what happened to our old iron. See, we were using it in the classroom, and some teachers you leave the water in the iron, some teachers didn't, and back and forth, and they weren't maybe consistent on what they put in the iron. So, and I think the iron wasn't clean. Now the iron has, some irons have a clean out where you can clean the calcium buildup. I do not see one on this iron. I'll have to read up on that. Usually it's some kind of a peg that you pull out or some kind of a disc that you pull out. Um, Mine just blows out on my project. Oh, that's like another reason why it's a $10 <laughs> iron, Peter. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So how do we get the water out? Do we use a drinking straw? No, you just take and open this up right where you uh, put it in uh -huh. and you just pour it out. That simple. Yeah, it's that simple. You just uh, pour it in or pour it out. Okay. Now when it comes out, it's going to be really hot. So it's good for making tea. So it's <laughs> that's what you want to do. Uh, so it's good to have like a Pyrex bowl or a, a measuring cup or something that you can pour that into. Uh, and let it just sit and cool down and then maybe take it to the sink. I wouldn't be taking my iron back and forth to the sink every whip stitch every day. I just have something here that I could pour it in and then take that and dump it out. Uh, probably uh, I have some friends who their irons, they travel with their big irons, and it really does wear on the iron to travel back and forth with it. That's why these little irons are so nice to travel back and forth, because you can, uh, you can get little cases for them, you can package them up and so that they're not getting banged around. But that's the same brand. Oliso, and definitely on my on my travel iron, I'm definitely going to clean it out too. Okay, this is going to get cleaned out and dusted off. Look how dusty, right there. Whew. See, you got to dust that out. All right. Now this doesn't go up and down. It has this little silicone. Uh, base and I just I just would have a different another silicone base or I keep mine on my wool pad uh, because I don't want it to hurt my laminate because it does get really hot yeah you don't want to put your 300 your hot $300 iron just sitting on top of your $3,000 sewing table no you do not want to do that <laughs> So I thought I would talk to you about uh, caring for your iron a little bit today. And again, I'm not pushing this $300 iron. I mean, if you want a $300 iron that, you know, does a few tricks, this is the brand to get. Uh, but if you if you want to get a, a, a less expensive iron, they're out there. You may have to replace them a little bit more because the heating element may not last as long. But... Uh, but that's, that's the scoop on irons, okay? Okay, so take care of your irons. I'm all for taking care of my equipment, definitely. So today, we're going to do block seven and eight. Seven is called the cake stand. Oh, and it's so pretty. I thought it was a basket. I thought it was a bear paw. You know, we don't have our light on, Peter. <clears throat> well, let me just, let me remedy that situation. Okay, okay. I'm going to put this down here out of the way. <laughs> All righty. Now, did you just lower that? <laughs> it wasn't filming anything? Or no, was I was it? filming the box. Oh, it was? Okay. Yeah. So there's the cake stand, and then here is uh, somebody's cabin. Whose cabin is this? Crockett. Crockett Cabin. Now, does that mean that it's a cabin named Crockett, or is it... Davy Crockett's cabin because it doesn't say Crockett's cabin. It just says Crockett cabin 
I don't so, know the answer to that. Yeah, just decide for yourself, okay? Yeah. So here they are. Here are the blocks. Uh, I love them. I love the little cake stand. I am happy that it's called that instead of just the basket block. Um, it's very cute. Without this, it could be a bear paw if the bear paws were going outward, but it's still pretty. It's I like it. It's a bread basket. I'm going to call it a bread basket. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. Your bread is pointy, huh? Croissants or something, yeah, maybe. Yeah, okay. croissants. Okay, so anyway. French. Uh, the best thing I can tell you about my fabric choices is that I tried to get something different than what I've used before. And I told you I wanted to work brown into this, so I thought this was a good opportunity for the brown. And I just love the way that these two um, fabrics play with each other. Even though they're both kind of the same scale, they have contrast in value. Very dark, very light. Okay, same thing with Peter's. Very dark, very light. Uh, and his uh, background's got a lot of fun, funky stuff going on, and that really makes that block interesting. This is really pretty because he's used that purple with the chip. Oh my goodness, Peter, I think that's the same. Is that the same purple I'm going to use today? Uh -huh. <gasps> Look yeah. at that. We yeah. are we are in sync. Is that the name of a singing group? Uh -huh. Okay, well, we're not that in sync, but we're in sync. Now, I chose a directional background. I know. You would think it went that way, wouldn't you? Oh. And in my block, it is going to go. Way? In my in my or, quilt, it is going to go way. that way. way. Oh, but okay. in the book, it goes this way. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it just so happens that when I made the half square triangles, that dictated how my backgrounds were going to go. So that's, and I, I've, oh, I was up and I thought, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? You make these to. backgrounds. I think so. I you think have to. Uh, when they're this cute and yeah. this little and this fun, if you have a directional print, you want to go ahead and make sure that those all go the same direction. They don't have to line up, but they should go the same direction. And like if you have a stripe, you want it to all go the same way, I think. But uh, I really like this. Now, for today, you know, I'm going to be using my... Uh, Peter Memory fabric. So I decided that this was going to be my cake stand. Ooh. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. I love how intense wow. that blue is. Isn't that just delicious? That's amazing. I love that. That's going to be really, really fun with that. And then I haven't used much purple, and so I thought I would use the purple here with this. Yeah. So again, it's a two color block. It's uh, so you need lots of contrast so that the design shows up really well. All right. So let me get my book out. Let me get my cutting thing here. Let me get my fabric. Fabric. My fabric. My background fabric. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and let's start with the basket. Now, don't show this page because I don't have the things turned over, okay? So, uh, I'm going to start with the light, which this is going to be my light. My Peter uh, fabric is going to be my light. The first measurement can be bumped up. Let me see what that's used for. 1A. Yes, it can be bumped up to a whole increment. So go ahead and bump that up to the whole increment. And I can't tell you what that increment is because you need to have the book to uh, to sew along with to us. To sew along with us because of copyright issues. So designer's got to get paid. The designer needs her money. Need, yep, needs to feed for her puppies. all the work she's done. So there's that. I call it putting food in the puppy bowl. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Chloe ha has completely healed from her uh, toenail incident. Her Paul tragedy? Yeah, Paul tragedy. Now, I'm not even going to move this. I'm just going to take my... Oh, no, you don't do that. No, never mind. I'm going to leave that hole. And then, down at the bottom, I'm going to cut one 
and I'm going to cut it the exact, okay, the exact size, which is a 7 8 inch increment. And it is that. But because I have this fancy schmancy yummy ruler, it gives me all those 1 8 inch lines. I'm using my 4 and a half inch square ruler from Creative Grid. Dawn, I think I caught something from you. What? Uh, obsessions with Creative Grid uh -huh. disease? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I caught the ruler bug from you. Yeah. Now, if you do love Creative Grid rulers and you are a collector like I am, you can go to their website, Creative Grid USA or creativegrid.com, and you can download a checkoff list of all the rulers they make. And you can just be checking off so that you don't keep buying the same one over and over. I'm going to cut this once on the diagonal, just like it says in the instructions. And I'm only going to use one. That's what the instruction says. So do you know what I'm going to do with this? Because that's on the bias. And if that just stays in my little collection of things, it's just going to get stretched out of place. I'm going to cut me a one and a half inch square right now that I've got my ruler in my hand. And I've got my uh, rotary cutter that, in place. That's a wonderful idea. And I'm just going to cut me that. And there we go. Got me a one and a half inch. And here's my basket. One and a half inch. Voila. Hello. And then this becomes my little trash. So there we go. So there's that. So A and H is done. Now I have to do a D. And D can be a whole increment. It has a 7 8 inch increment. I'm going to go up to a whole increment and I'm going to get a skinnier piece of fabric because I think this is exactly the fabric. Let me measure that. Oh, yep. See, that's exactly what I needed. And I'm going to need two of those. So voila, my fabric was doubled and so now I have two of those. <coughs> I'm just going down the grocery list and I only need one of this size, and I already have a strip cut of that size, and I only need one. So look at that. See, once I cut my strips, they just keep it using the same sizes over and over, and I've just got them right here, and how convenient is that? That's like super duper convenient, don't you think? Very convenient. And then now I need two, um, here two of this size strip and it needs to be it's not going to be a square it's going to be a rectangle so I'm going to cut that and well I've got that so that's one two three four five one two three four five so I've got all those elements ready to go and see now I'm down to this look at that that's going to be just a, a little one inch square because why would I throw that into into the trash when I could get a one inch square out of that you no can make way an entire quilt out of those. hey let me tell you and I'm just going to do it right now while I got it out it takes one second and I put it in my little drawer or I put it in my little pile here that I'm keeping with my uh, project that I'm making. And then after the project's done, I will put them in my drawer. Okay, now I'll go to the dark fabric. Which dark? Oh, I was going to use this. So, guess what? I'm going to come over to my new iron. Now, have you been maintaining your iron? I have. I think this is the <laughs> second time I've used it. And this is one of those that shuts off. So you got to pick it up and, and baby it a little bit. But what I wanted to show you was I usually typically almost always press my fabric on the wrong side. Okay. Okay. Because remember you were saying that your uh, iron tends to spit up a uh -huh. little bit. If that should happen, it's better for it to do it oh, on the back side yeah. than on the front side. Now this iron is so hot, I'm not using any steam. I'm not using any That's starch. That's ridiculous. Because there's, I'm showing them the wrinkles down here. Yeah. 
And then I'm going to come up here and show how flat that piece is because of the iron. Because how and hot the wool this mat. iron gets yeah, and the wool, wool mat. mat. Wow. Makes such the difference. And that iron looks like it's just gliding. It's just gliding through. So I'm gonna lift that up. Yeah, this wrinkle's just well, going to disappear. I might be able to ask for one of those in my Easter basket. Yeah, I'm hey. Just saying. And they are Eastery colors too. They are. Yeah, yeah. Which would be your choice of color? The well, blue, the yellow, the pink, or the, is there a purple one? I think there's a purple Oh, purple, one. purple. Got to have the go? purple. You go with the purple. Got to have the purple. I hope that's one of the choices. Okay, so you know me. How I do this is I take, put the salvage up, pick up this, bring it to the salvage, put it between my fingers, look at that bottom, and make sure... That can it's you, nice and can even. Can you make it not even? Uh-huh. So they can see on camera, like, dramatically not even. That's pretty dramatic right there. There we go. There's that big wrinkle. Yeah. And then dramatically the other way so they can see it, where the wrinkle goes. Because this took me a while to figure out. See how wrinkly uh -huh. that is? There's that big wrinkle. Okay. Yeah. So, and we're talking about the bottom, the fold, uh -huh. is what we're talking about. Yeah. And so now... See, I can go like this, I can go like that. I can move that around until that just lays perfectly flat. I mean, perfectly uh, horizontal. Yeah. See that? And then just lay that down. But the real trick, the real uh, test, it's not a trick. The real test is when you measure it. Because you got to measure the parallel lines. So you come down here, and you put your ruler on a line on the fold of the fabric. Then you come up here and you look and you say, oh, that's pretty good. Look, that's pretty good. This is not going to be completely straight, but it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. And so then you want to straighten that edge. Voila! Got, got my rotary mat here that back on that line, making sure that's straight. There we go. And now I'm going to cut a strip and I'm going to look and see what the biggest uh, cut is. And I'm going to cut that. And again, it is a uh, seven eighths inch increment. I'm going to bump it up to the whole increment. I'm glad you told you told me that because um, I was cutting fabric and I did do that. Uh -huh. And then I was able to use it for a lot more of the other blocks because I could cut out the width and then just shave off the length. Right. Because I had the widest cut. Right. Great. That was a great tip, Dawn. So I can probably cut all this out of just this because it's the biggest one. So the first thing I need is just one square of this one of this uh, biggest cut Dawn do you like your rotating map? I kind of do I'm getting it's used to it. You, it well you know what I have to think about it uh, because I'm not used to make uh, to using one and so yeah I have to get used to it but it looks like you also have the right rulers to go with it. Yeah, though. I do. I do. So they don't extend over the mat. Right, right. Twelve and a half. Twelve nice. and a half. Everything's twelve and a half. Nice. Okay, so there's there's that. Uh, matching up with that. And then the next increment is a uh, seven eighths increment, and I'm going to bump it up. And I need two of those. And you're doing that because that's one you can resize, right? That's one I can, yes. It's going to be a half square triangle. So you know I can I can size that up. I'm going to have to size that up before I sew it in anyway. So here we go. I'm going to make it the full size. I'm going to make it the full size here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And then turn it and then size it because I didn't straighten that edge. Okay, there's that. Now, because my strip was not the width that I needed, Just I'm going to have to cut this it. down. Yeah. 
to the square size I need, but I'm here to tell you. It's a lot more efficient. But I'm here to tell you, guess what I'm going to have left over? You're going to have two one-inch squares for your quilt. Yes, I am. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to have four because there's four? two things underneath me. Um, yeah. Four. That's yeah. almost a whole block. Yep, 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 yep. I'm going to cut it right now because it's out here. There you go. I'm going to put it down in my little package down here. <laughs> That's room to go. Okay, now that matches up with these two. Match those up. There's that. Match that up. There's that. That stands alone. That stands alone. That stands alone. And now, my last cut, I cannot, I cannot make it bigger. Do not make it bigger. You have to make it the seven eighths. Okay, you're only going to need one, <clears throat> and your ruler has that eighth inch increment on it. If you don't have a ruler with an eighth inch increment, I would suggest that you find one. Now, some people get so excited to sew. That's me. So excited to sew that they don't take time to go ahead and cut their babies. Um, but not me, because I love my babies. My babies are almost as important to me as the quilt block. Having my babies. Well, that's because you have a system. Isn't there a song, having my baby? I think there's a song like that. I thought that was like um, a barbecue. Oh, baby barbecue. Like now, see, baby back. Gotta baby have back my baby back. Baby oh, yeah, back. that's but that's a different song. Okay, now that's not one inch, so that goes in the trash, unless, Peter, you want it for your artwork. I'll but to that's, that's going to that's gonna go in the trash. And then I'm putting my one down there. And then this gets cut on the diagonal, corner to corner. And there's that. And those stand alone. So, those and those. Okay, now that's that one. All cut, ready to go. Fold my fabric back up. Lenine is making chicken sounds. Do Somebody's you, feeling does their Does anybody oats. know Somebody's why Lenine is making chicken sounds? We have no idea. Maybe she's, she's, she's excited about something. hungry for chicken and noodles. No, she's excited about something. Oh, okay. Okay, the uh, Crockett cabin. I could ask her. You could ask her. I can see her from here. Can you? Yeah. From the light fabric, I need eight of this size uh, strip. And look, I'm not going to get eight out of that. Ah. I'm going to see how many I can get out of it. I folded it in half. Now I'm going to cut two at a time. There's two. Oops. Well, Dawn, keep hitting your ruler. Four. Six. Ooh, seven. Wow, you got lucky there. Wow. Look at how frugal. <laughs> Seven. Now I'm going to take this strip right here, and I'm just going to cut it where I need it. Oh, look. No, I'm not. I'm going to take that. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to take this. <laughs> I found one little piece. Look, I found one little piece the perfect size. You just keep digging. You'll find it. That's what i got to say. Look at that, eight without even having to cut a new strip. Nice. Is that just awesome or what? Oh, that's awesome. Got a piece here that is a one inch piece. I'm gonna cut me a little one inch square. Add it to my little bin down here. 
Yeah, this is the little bin I'm talking about. I love that little bin. Yeah, I do too. I need to get bun a bunch of those for my room, yeah, my sewing you room. You do, because, well, this one's just for this project right. that I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, and once I'm done with this project, then these will all go in my drawers, okay? But I'm saving them out for my uh, project. Okay, so that's the start of this one right here. I needed eight of those, and now I need two... Uh, and this is a whole increment. I mean, this can be a whole increment, even though it doesn't say. And this is just happens to be the strip that is the size that it can be. So, look at this. I'm going to cut. Don't even have to uh, cut a new strip because I already had a strip cut. So, I needed two of those. And then there's this. And I'm going to press this, and again, just to uh, hear it again, I'm going to press on the back side of the fabric. And the reason being, again, is if you've got water in your iron and it should spit up or it should spit out something that is not pretty, it'll be on the back of your fabric and not ruin your fabric. Now, there's a big debate of out there about whether you wash your fabric first or you don't wash. I'm a, I'm a don't wash it. I, I don't wash my fabric. Uh, I think there's only been one time I've regretted that decision. And that's when I used a fabric that wasn't uh, quilt shop quality fabric. So learn that lesson. You know, you gotta make the mistakes to learn the lessons. That's what mistakes are. They're lesson building things. I don't know what else to call them. Don't call them mistakes. Call them lessons learned. Okay. I just love that new iron. Just love it. Okay. I didn't know it was three hundred dollars when I picked it up. Are but you? <laughs> I'm worth it. Hey, you I'm are, worth you it. You know what? You're worth it because you do so many quilts. I am worth it. Okay. Here we go. Now look. This was way off, Peter. This, Let's whoever cut this off. fat quarter. Oh, goodness gracious. Whoever cut this fat quarter, they were like drunk that day. They were, uh, they were kind of in the sauce, I'd say, wouldn't you? That's a lot of fabric to, uh. Well, the good news is we cut them. We cut them. You give extra. We, Here we don't the cut them at 18 inches. Shot. We cut them at 19 inches. Yeah. So that way we give you the extra to square up your Now you know I can get an fabric. inch. You know I can get an inch out of this one end. You know I can. Look at that. We'll cut that. I wonder how many one inch squares you're going to get out of this video today. I don't know, but a lot. From your leftovers. I'm going to cut that here in a minute. Oh, I can cut it down here off of my thing. Okay. We'll cut off this salvage. But the funny thing is, you'll be making that quilt while you're working on this quilt. Right. Because you can sew them together as your beginner and ender. Exactly. That's what <laughs> I'm saying to you. Or I can wait, and if they're needed in my blocks, I'll you'll have, have them. them. I'll have them. See, I just got one, two. Out of what somebody would have thrown away. Peter. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Because I got in trouble the other day. Yes, he did. We were doing a I video. A whole strip off we were, of his I, stuff. I cut a strip off of a quilt because I was squaring up a block, and I put it in your pasta tin, or your, I'm sorry, your yeah. soup kettle. My soup, soup pot, kettle. Soup pot. Uh -huh. And Cappy pulled it out, or you pulled it out oh, during the weird. during the spinoff. Yep. <laughs> and you're like, well, there's, there's, there's 24 squares right there. <laughs> look at that. Now, look, what it would have been trash is four one-inch squares. And I'm going to put them in my pen, my little bin right there. Okay. Now, this edge is straight. You guys probably think that I'm insane. It's okay with me. I don't really care. I'm having a good time. Well. Okay. I think I know what it is. Okay. I know what it is. I'm going to cut the biggest increment first. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut a strip the size of the second block, just because I know that's a good size. And I'll be using it later on. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one of those, too. I don't think you're insane. It's just I think that you've done so many quilts that you have a system on 
getting the most enjoyment out of the fabric I do. and being able to make the most because you have you can be I realize that you you're making those one inch blocks to make a quilt but then you can also do like if you're saving flying geese or I'm sorry half square triangles off a quilt right then you can make a quilt from the potato right. chip block right like I'm going to have one of these left over today. Uh-huh. Wow, that's nice. And so I brought it so that I could bring my flying yes. geese ruler. I'm going to just see. I know that two and a half is a good usable size. I found this out from the, you know, the shop sample I'm working on? Yeah. Do you know how many inches I'm going to get from my leftovers? How much? 200 inches. Now, see, that would have been trash for somebody. It, it would have been before I watched this channel. Uh-huh. Now, look, that's a perfect two and a half inch square that I'm going to be able to use some time down the road. Yes. Because I will put this in my two and a half inch drawer, and when I have, you know, 200 of these in my drawer, then I pick it out, I'll just make me a quilt. I'm going to have 100 left over okay, for my so quilt. Okay, so see, right there is going to be a quilt. You and put I'm, a solid block with that, and you didn't even plan it, you I'm, didn't... Well, I'm going to plan the quilt that I'm oh, going to make are? with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm back to doing this. I have to have four of these. Four. Four of this size. Four. So let me get this out here. I like to do this every once in a while so I can cut them. Because I didn't straighten that edge, so I overcut it. Now I'm going to straighten the edge. I think Cappy and I, the next thing that we're going to do, I hope you guys watched our uh, our turning mat video. It was so fun. We had such a good time doing it. I think we're going to do rotary cutters next. We're going to talk about all the different... I mean, there's got to be 60 or 70 different kinds of rotary cutters out there. We won't be having them all in here. Are we going we'll to have having... Are we gonna have rotary cutter wars? Rotary cutter... Well, no. Because the, the last time was the... Rotating Mat Wars. Uh, it was the spinoff. Yep. The spinoff. Okay, now this. Do not be wasting that fabric, Dawn. How many of these do I need? Oh, I only need one of these. Well, so. Undo that. Don't cut two if you don't need to. Spinning that mat. It's a spinner. Okay. And there we go. I only needed one of those. Wonder why. I thought I needed two. Two? No, I didn't need two of those. I was looking at the wrong thing. Four and two. So I did need two of these. It's hard to read through a ruler. Yeah. Now somebody on on the channel this weekend wrote and asked when the lines of the ruler, let me get a piece of fabric here that you can, a light piece, so you can see the lines on my ruler a little bit better. The lines of the ruler have a thickness to them. Mm -hmm. Now, some rulers have thicker lines than others, mm -hmm. okay? And so she was wondering, do you put the cut, do you put the fabric on the outside of the line, the inside of the line, or do you try to hit the middle of the line? Well, I just don't see how you can hit the middle of that skinny little line, okay? So I tend to always go on the outside. Now, my answer to her was, it doesn't probably matter as long as you're consistent. Do you know what I mean? I mean, either put the cut edge, like if I were to square this up or I was to cut this, am I going to be on that side of the line, on this side of the line, or am I going to move it over and be on this side of the line? I always uh, go with the outside of the line. If itself. you have, yeah, because if you have three pieces in a block, uh huh, and you sew them together, uh huh, that thickness times three, you're yeah. gonna lose that. Yeah. 
So I always want to go ahead and that's, do that. That's me, Yeah, personally. that's like the size of a stitch, isn't it? Yeah, that's a Equivalent thread. Equivalent to a thread. About the size yeah. of a thread. Not a stitch, but a thread. He knew what he was saying. Yeah. All right. The size of a thread. So now I've got all my all my strip sets here that i got to keep organized because did you see how handy all those strips came into uh, play today? Very handy. I did not have to cut any extra strips out of my uh, basic fabric. So that was good. That's good. That's good. I should have put these strips away. I will before the day's over. This goes with this, this goes with this. And let's come on over to the sewing machine. Let's get these blocks made. Okay. I didn't tell this group, but the other day I was uh, doing a quilt and I was sewing big long rows of blocks together. So I had my big long clapper out and as I was pressing along, I thought to myself, well, I need to put the clapper on this so that it can get um, flattened. So do I pull the clapper out? No, I got my little clapper. And while it was just right on the other clapper, I just put this right on top. It was amazing. It flattened it right out. It was awesome. So another excuse to have two clappers and just saying, just saying. I tried it uh, yes, last night when I was sewing. It works really good. Yeah, yeah. So let's set up the uh, the cake stand here real quick. Well, first of all, got these pieces. And this is that. And uh, this goes there. And this goes there. And that goes. There. And I'm just looking at my picture from the book. The picture from the book. Yeah. Picture pages, picture pages. Come and get your picture pages. Now, this is the reason that we had to cut these the 7 8 inch increment. Because we're not going to have a chance to size this whole section up. It needs to be the size it's supposed to be. Okay? But, as far as the half square triangles, we're doing good. So. Here we go. I'm going to, do you want me to draw the line or do you want me to use my thing? You know, you can always draw your line. Where's my pencil? Let's do a line drawing. Let's just do a line drawing. We can alternate every other episode okay. where we draw, where we use the. Okay. Well, how about it? I've got two to do. So how about if I do one one way and one the other way? You know, let's do one one way and one the other way. Good idea, Peter. You I know, you I know, have I know. always got the good uh hey, I listen. You do, don't I you? I listen. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> There's my line, and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on each side of that line. And I got me a line down here. Oh, gotta take my shoes off. That's the number one. Get my foot pedal, and here we go. So without the line drawn, I'm just gonna use this line right here on my sewing machine. I've got my quarter inch foot, so I know where the quarter inch is. I put the diagonal on my quarter inch, Right there's my quarter inch, so I put my diagonal right there, and then my other diagonal is here on my quarter inch line. This is my needle line, so that's my stitch line right there, and I'm a quarter inch away from the center. And I'm just going to, I'm going to move my hand, I'm just going to guide that so you can see that that corner stays right with, and then you kind of just have to eyeball the rest. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing to this one because this is going to be a half square triangle also. It just goes there. It 
See how I'm just following that line? Now there's my beginner and ender, but today I brought these. I'm making some um, some nine patches with a one and a half inch for a project that I'm doing. So I'm going to use those as my beginners and enders today. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this on the other side. See, this is my line. Put my line on my quarter inch. Use my diagonal. Oh, I'm sewing right over the top of the line I just sewed. <laughs> you might want to pay attention to that and not do that. <laughs> that is funny, Dawn. Okay, let's get that out of there. Oh, get that out of there. No harm, no foul, right? Let's put it on this side. Okay. Okay, let me cut this off. Now let's not do that again, Dawn. Put my quarter right there. Line right there. Oh, didn't get it under the feed dogs. And then, you know, these are oversized an eighth of an inch. So, we're doing good. We're go doing good. But when we cut them apart, they're going to be bigger than they need to be. But we were going to have to square them up anyway. So, might as well give yourself a break. That didn't sew at all. Do I not have any thread? Look, no thread. Is it Monday or what? Look at that little bird's nest I got. It's Monday. Monday, Monday. What do you know about that song, Peter? Anything? Mm -mm. Is that ABBA? No, that's not ABBA. Monday, Monday. Is, is it better than Sunday, Sunday? Oh, no, Sunday is my favorite day. Sunday is my favorite day. Okay, now, it came out of my, uh, what happened was it came out of my uh, needle. My thread came out of unthreaded, so I'm just going to thread it. I never just try and thread the needle. If my thread comes out of my needle, I always just go and I thread the whole thing, okay? Because I want to make sure it didn't pop out of my tension disc. So, here I go. My, my tension is up. I'm going to have to raise my foot all the way because my uh, take-up lever wasn't where it was supposed to be. So, I'm going to go down, get my take-up lever, and come down. And this is when I put my foot down because now I've engaged my tension. Okay? And I'm going to put that behind that little hook where it goes. And then it goes behind a little hook here. And put that behind. I love these needle threaders when they work. It's like playing chess. It's you gotta hold your tongue just right. You can only work it on overcast days. See that? I love when it does that. <laughs> now I'm gonna sew on my beginner. So that I know I've got some thread on it. There we go. Okay, let's try this all over again. So, practice makes perfect. Well, I remember too, you said this machine likes to sew on fabric. It does not like to sew on air. Yeah. So my needle is down. So it's got to get into the it's fabric. It's got to get into the fabric. That, yeah. It's got to grab onto the fabric. I think on that one piece, when you said you missed the, the piece, that's when that thread nest kind of happened. Yeah, because I was jerking it back and yeah. forth. Remember that? Yeah. Remember that lesson where you said you couldn't um, move your fabric back and forth like that?
right. Now that did not sew again. Am I out of bobbin thread? I think you're out of bobbin thread this time. This is Are what, you? yes, you? yes Are I you? am because you know what, before the thing today I thought I'm gonna be running out of bobbin thread so I've made myself a new bobbin. So you refilled the bobbin. So I refilled the bobbin. But we, you were talking about how to clean your iron. What about it? Well, no, you I went mean, from filling I... your bobbin to talking about the iron. Yeah. Okay, so that's what my problem was. It wasn't that it wasn't threaded. It was that my bobbin, well, I had a little bit left. But I'm going to go ahead. I always like oh, to look. Oh, look, there's enough there to hand sew a, a binding. Okay. Don't on be a, throwing that away. Coaster. Don't be throwing that away. Don't. On a coaster. <laughs> okay. Is it Monday? Man, it is Monday. Let's make sure we have thread. Well, and some machines, some machines don't like sewing on a low bobbin either. Well, I don't like think this one did because, you know, it came out of... Yeah. Of course, I was pulling it back and forth. That was my fault. I shouldn't have been pulling that back and forth. I'm going to hang on to it this time. Put the needle gonna, on the record and I'm gonna put my skip tension. a beat. Okay, there we go. Oh, it now, sounds like it, it sounds even happy. sounds it even it sounds, sounds like it's sewing, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds mm -hmm. happy. Happy as Cappy. I wonder if Cappy got made fun of with that name, Cappy. I wonder her real name is Capricious. So like when you're in kindergarten, do you stand up and say, Hi, my name is Capricious? I mean that's a mouthful for a grown up. Much less for a little kid. I know. Uh oh. I wouldn't you've be saying summoned, it if you could. Summon the dragon. Summon the dragon. No, no, not at all. So, Cappy, did you get made fun of when you with your name well, when you were in? Okay, so funny story. Okay. I didn't even know my name was Capricia till I was in second grade. Because, Nobody told you. You know, because my second grade teacher, when she's calling out roll call, uh -huh. called Capricia, and I didn't answer. I mean, I didn't answer. No, because my you, name. what did you think your name was? Cappy. Oh, yeah, Cappy. Cappy. Everybody calls Cappy. Call Cappy. Cappy. Everybody always calls me Cappy. And so she goes to the whole list and obviously figures out I'm the only one. And she goes, I think this is you. And I went, no, that's not my name. And she's like, well, yeah, that is your name. It's It has to be you. You're Cappy. I said, no, that's not me. And My name is Cappy. And I went home and told my mom. I said, she tried to tell me my name was Capricia. And I went, well, it is. And I went, well, nobody told me. <laughs> <laughs> so see? That is, is a pretty funny story. That, that's kind of wackadoodle. That's a great that's kind of wack story. I know, that's wackadoodle. And, and I've been, of course, here's the fun thing. When Dawn's doing her video, all of us in the back room get to hear. And I'm, I'm like, feeling really bad for my iron now. I think it's not been treated well. Oh, see. Did so you leave, Peter. have you left water on your iron? Well, I have, okay, so I, here's, she's absolutely telling the truth. Because I had an Oloso iron, and I left water in it, and it died. Yep. But now I have like the steam station one yep. that she's talking about, yep. and it's doing great. And it's because it's in the reservoir, and it's a totally different thing. So, and I nice. and I changed the water more. So, pay attention to what Don says. Now, she's are you using truth. sparkling water? No, or regular I drink tap. sparkling water <laughs> with you know the little treats what in kind it. What kind of water does your iron require? I use um, distilled water on mine. And does it say that in your instructions? It does. It well, does. Then that's it says, what it needs to use. Yeah, it says that. But you're right. Some of them want tap water. Some of them want. I mean, you got to be careful. Now what you my use. my iron at home, my steam engine wants half and half. Your steam, steam engine. engine. <laughs> yeah, but but it's steam. It yeah. wants half distilled and half tap. There you go. And I think it depends on your tap water. Like in Noblesville, where I live, our tap water is nothing but just pure I iron. Mean, iron. It's awful, nasty Wine. water. Yeah. And I used to live out on a farm. And we had well water. There's no way to put that in an iron. Yeah. So you have to measure what you got. But boy, it makes a difference. It certainly does. It really, 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 really does. We're so just saying. Anyway. Glad to see everybody. I'm, I'm, it's really nice to get to listen well, to the videos. Well, the question was, did you get made fun of? I well, mean, did people say, happy Cappy, happy no, Cappy? No, so, okay, so there I have so many name stories. So when I was in junior high, we had a substitute teacher who in phys ed was trying to read my name. And, of course, it still said Capricia. I don't know. It always said Capricia. Well, that's because that's your name, Because it's apparently my name. I didn't know in second grade. But this was junior high, so I knew by then. She called me Capricia. And when she was trying to say it, she came out crappy. Oh! <gasps> 
Diamond High School, and you know oh, how that goes. Oh, man, so now yeah, all the so, boys are well, calling you crap. Well, I was in phys ed, so it was all girls in the room. However, bit my friends being my friends, they called me that all through high school. I was called crappy. I was always crappy. Was wait, crappy. wait. Lenine calls you crappy. She does call me crappy, and that's why. And her husband, whose name is Brett, I call Brat, and he calls me crap. And so, and it's not... It, to me, it's a term of endearment. It doesn't it's, sound bad. It's with love. It's with love, yeah. So it feels it feels good to me. So so people call me crappy, and I don't think anything of it. It's just kind of a name. I even had it on the back of a T-shirt when I was in high school because it was my name, and I could get away with it. And it was like <laughs> on the edge, you know. Isn't that crazy? You yeah, are funny. So I've got lots of name stories. Oh, that's okay. awesome. Yeah. But, but I'm glad I'm Dawn's friend because she has yeah. a normal name. Uh, well, yeah. And it's easier. But, you know, when I was in... Sixth grade, you know, you kind of go through these phases. I wanted to be called by my middle name, oh, which of was Renee. I like Renee. So, you know, I decided I wasn't going to be Dawn anymore. You're going to be Renee. I'm, I, you know, that was my artsy phase I went through. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was well, going to be Renee. Hey, Tula Pink changed her name to Tula, and she gets away with it no problem. Right. So there right. you go. So that's fun. You should be called what you want to be called, right. no matter if what you, it is. If you have a fun nickname, put it in yeah. the comments. That'd be fun to hear. But that's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, that's appropriate. <laughs> right. All right. Exactly. Now, I went ahead, and there were some half square triangles I needed to make for my other block. So I went ahead and did that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, triangle square up ruler that, you know, I just love, love, love. It's the quilt in the day. I uh, love it too. It's the quilt in the day. Love it. Triangle square up ruler. It comes in three sizes. For these little blocks, this four and a half inch size is just perfect. It will change your life, folks. It is perfect. And what happens with this is, you know, when I'm not making 500 half square triangles and I only need maybe four for a project, then that's when I get this puppy out. You're going to need to change that blade. No, it's a good blade. I just didn't press as hard because I was out here on the edge of the thing. Doesn't that mean it's dull if you have to press hard? No, I just okay. see this was giving on me. Oh, you it was, on a hard it, surface. I'm not on a hard surface. That's what I meant. I didn't mean that oh, I was gosh. needed to press hard. Uh, I just needed to uh, get it under there. Sounds dull. So see, no, it's not. I just changed it. I just changed it, Peter. So it's not dull. Could have came doll in the box. It could have, or somebody could have borrowed it. I'll tell you what I got and to use. it up. I tell you what I got to use the what? other day. What's that? I got to use those. Um, Oh, geez. The OGs? No, it's those blades, but they're toughened, so they're twice as hard. And you mean you they're wanna, titanium? Yeah, you want to talk about a sharp blade. Yeah, but you oh, know, I've buddy. heard that those cut up your mats really bad. Oh, do Did they? you notice if your mat was being cut up any better? Any no, worse? I just noticed it was a really sharp blade. Yeah. I don't know what it did to the mat. But well, boy. that's just what I heard. I've not experienced that. And until I experience it, I'm not going to pass it along. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I know cutting in the same place on your mat will tear it's it It's not up. good. Not good. I rotate my mat. And, you know, you should never leave your mat out in, in your car where the heat is. Your mat should not get a lot of heat because it'll warp. And people have all kinds of tips on how to unwarp your mat. Dude, none your of them what, work. No, your mat cannot be unwarped. Once it's warped, it's dead. Once it's warped, it's a goner. So, and they're not cheap either, you know. Mats. I warped my mat, and, and I had to always use the side that wasn't warped to uh -huh. work to cut on it. Yeah. And then um, somebody was getting rid of their mat because they got a new mat, and I was like, "Well, I'll take it. Let me have it." Yeah. And I turned their mat over and never been cut on, so it was like having a brand new mat. Right, right. You know that you can do that. You can uh, use both sides of the mat. The mat is the same on both. One side typically doesn't have lines on it, but I never use the lines on the mat they anyway. They distract me. I just flip them over uh, because yeah. the lines get in my way. So you know, it's it's no big deal. But yeah, you get two mats when you buy a mat. One on the front and one on the back definitely go ahead and uh, do that use it that way now I'm just cutting off my little dog ears and I'm just cutting in between those two lines that I made so if you drew the line you're cutting on the drawn line if you didn't you're just cutting in between your two seam allowances and I brought Were me... you doing the two at a time because it's a seam, seam allowance? No, I didn't at this point because I didn't have a line. Oh. Uh, my papers have a line. Papers have a line. Got papers it. have a line. These don't have a line. So um, now I'm going to square them up. So I know what this one gets squared up to. 
ends and I'll put my little uh, line that I want them to be are you right your, on are the you putting seam. Your stitching line on the stitching line. I'm putting my stitching line on the line that says what size they the need to be. The dotted line on the stitching line. And you know what? I should have done my. I should have waited to I do saw my that. little thing. I saw that. Why? Why didn't you stop me? Because I didn't know what you were doing. Yeah. I thought they were already trimmed up. Oh, they shouldn't have. They should have waited. I should have waited because now they're going to be off by it's, a little bit. It's Monday. I'm telling you, if you get it, a pass today for using a doll blade. And I'm not using your, a doll blade. You're cutting your dog ears on a Monday. It is a Monday. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Well, I haven't had any sleep for a little while because Dad is having some anxiety, and uh, so I'm sleep deprived. I'm going to use that. Worst. I'm going to use that as an excuse. I tell you, sleep deprivation it will mess <clears> you up. It is not good. Let it me is tell no you. good. It is not good. After this video, I'm staring clear at dawn. Yeah. Well, I, you should come with a warning that you're sleep yeah, deprived. Yeah, I should. I should have like <laughs> don't, a scarlet, don't approach. Like a scarlet letter. <laughs> don't approach. Sleep do deprived. Not, do not. Now I'm in a good mood. Because you know, I'm I was anxious, it's sewing. And, and I get to sew today. Yeah. And I was anxious. You know what, Peter? I think maybe this is a dull blade. <laughs> that is a very dull blade. I can tell by the sound. I'm telling it makes. you, I replaced this blade before I brought it in here. I know, but I can just hear it. I can hear it too. It's like nails on a chalkboard. And I'm man. having to press hard. I know you You're are. Right. You shouldn't have so, to. Uh, you shouldn't have to press hard. So I'll be buying me some new blades today. And replacing this little cutter with a new blade. And maybe by Friday's video. See, look at that. And I pressed really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now you get to sit and watch somebody struggle <laughs> with, a, with doll a, blade. a doll blade. If you struggle like this when you cut your half square, anything, it's time to replace your blade. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to go get my <laughs> other cutter. You know, don't put up with that. And you know, you know what happened? I got a new blade because I had mine in my my rotary cutter for quite a while. Yeah. And I had it had made it through three projects. I'm like, you know what? It's, it's, I know, I know. It's time for a new blade. Well, I put the new blade in. It cut great for a few cuts, and then it didn't. It started misbehaving. And the sad thing was, I only bought a one pack. I usually buy the five pack. Oh yeah, that's so that way. way. If I get a dud, because sometimes you do, yeah, you know, I got another one I can just put in there. Look at that. Just cut perfect. Like butter. And that's not even a new blade. That's just a, a yeah, sharp this blade. Is a, this is just a sharp blade. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, now I'm much happier. I was fighting with that. Don't fight. Don't fight with your blade. Well, now how many of us do that though? We think, oh, I'll replace it next time. Oh, I'll replace it next time. Oh, well, what I'll happens is, is that you get three projects out and then you replace it. Yeah. Yeah, rotary cutter. I mean, I don't know why we wait so long to replace them. They're kind of expensive, but in the long run, the you aggravation. Saved, yes, the time and Man, did you see the aggravation I was having with that? Well, what will happen with me is, like on this project that I'm working on for the shop, shop sample. Yeah. Um, I have a template ruler I'm using. It's called the P Peaky and. Spike. Spike. Yeah, the Peaky and Spike. I'm making those. And I put my brand new rotary blade in, but you know what? When I went to go cut the edge, I ran into the template. Oh! So I knew. Ooh, that did that make your teeth hurt? That makes my teeth it, hurt when you do that. Yeah, it's like stubbing my toe because Ooh. I knew it was a brand new blade I just put in there. Yeah. And I didn't buy the five pack. Yeah. So I ended up dolling the blade my, on my own accord because I hit the template plastic. Yeah, that is not so. good. And if you should happen to leave a pin in and go over that pin, <sighs> ooh, man, that just. And it always happens when you just Change replace the, the blade. blade. Yep. So, lesson here, people. Uh, trim your ears after you trim your half square triangles. <clears throat> These are a little bit bigger. It tells you on your fab on your pattern in the book. In the and we didn't say what the book was, but the book is the schoolgirl sampler. Let's uh, show that book. Because yeah, let's, somebody, do a, let's do a somebody, cover shot. Somebody asked about the book the other day. Mm -hmm. um, it is the School 
Girl Sampler, 72 simple four inch blocks and seven charming quilts. Uh, and I think Peter's going to start working on one a, a little quilt maybe because he's so far ahead of everybody. He's going to have all his blocks made and he's going to want to do more. And it's by this Kathleen Tracy. And she's very talented. Very, very talented. Very I don't know if talented. It has a picture of her in here or not. They, you, yeah, there she is. Oh, there is. she is. Meet the designer, y'all. Yeah, about the author. Isn't she? She's sweet. She must live in some kind of a log cabin-y thing, or that's her chimney or something. That's but isn't cool. it? She loves quilting. Yeah. Began in 2000. She hasn't been only 22 years has she been quilting, so. She's talented. She is very talented. We're uh, happy that she wrote this book because uh, Well, and they're simple. We're enjoying I, it. I grabbed out, there was a book I have on four-inch blocks, mm -hmm. and it's, um, and it makes like a I'm not going to say the name of the designer, but it uh, it makes a gorgeous quilt. Uh -huh. But I was like, wow, you know, what am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? Well, I started looking through those blocks, and I mean, you want to talk about some really complicated, mm. com we're talking calculus. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are quilters out there that Whew. thrive on that. They thrive Whew. on that. That's what they get into. Just like I get into the little squares, they get into those complicated, complex shapes. Well, I just closed the book and put it back on the bookcase. And just would admire it from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. Like you would a piece of art. Yeah, because I'm happy with this one. I may just do what you said, like get my, when my bundle comes in that I ordered, uh -huh. do it again. But you, Yeah, use they that said, fabric. oh, are you talking about the Kim Deal bundle? Yeah. Now, I did call about those, oh, okay. uh, what Peter. You got? What and, you got? What's the word on the street? Well, the word is, is that uh, we didn't get our name in in time to get the first go around. Oh, uh, okay. So we're waiting on the second go around, and they said middle of April. Oh, okay. So we're almost there. We're almost we're there. We're almost at the middle of April. Well, that's exciting. So that yeah, so I think those bundles may be coming well, soon. And how appropriate is that? Because it's called Right as Rain. Right as Rain in middle here. of April is April right. showers. April showers. Hey. What do we what can you say? I wonder if her next line is gonna be called May Flowers. Hmm, I don't know. Why don't you Can you call, call Kim and ask her? I could call Kim. <laughs> she got a puppy, you know. She rescued oh. a puppy from the pound. Oh. It is so adorable. It's kind of a little terrier. Oh a blonde. Very, very cute. Oh, so cute. So now I'm just pressing them. They're the exact size they need to be after I did all that squaring up. Now, I'll tell you what I do at home. I don't have Peter to talk to. He doesn't go home with me and film me every day. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew that or not. <laughs> that would be funny. That house. would be funny to go home and film yeah, you every day. Yeah, He goes to his own house. Now, if he's filming there, and if he's filming his wife, I don't know anything about it, uh, but he doesn't go home with me, so I don't really have anybody to talk to unless it's Chloe and Dad, but sometimes I just put uh, YouTube videos on and just watch YouTube videos. I don't watch my own. You don't? That would be narcissistic, wouldn't you it? You don't? Is that what that's called? Well, you know what's funny is here at the shop, we play, we play the channel in the oh, I know. cross stitch department. I know. So and when I'm working in the cross stitch department, I get to hear us back. All the time. And the funny thing is, I had no idea how funny you are until I started listening to the playback of the videos. Oh really? Yeah. And then you're entertained. I'm sitting here just just because I'm like I'll be, you know, working and straighten or doing inventory and it's uh, it's background noise. Yeah, yeah. And you're hearing it and it's just I'll chuckle. <laughs> Well, so anyway, uh, I've, uh, and you learn a lot. You really. should start listening back to your videos, Dawn. Well, you know, what I do is I go in and I turn the uh, volume, volume off. off and I look at the comments and uh, kind of try to answer any questions. And one of the questions this week was my one-inch square quilt. Yes. I, 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 what pattern? Yeah, I, I saw think that. some people thought that that was my own design. It is not my own design. It is uh, Lisa Bonjean's design uh, from Primitive Gatherings. And I forgot to look up the name of the of the quilt, but just go on her Facebook page or her website. Excuse me, her website. Website. Uh, which is Primitive Gatherings dot com I think and look through the quilt patterns and uh, you'll see it there it's um it's a jewel I love it I ought to look the name was up the for background um bigger chunks or are those all one inches that are pieced together no they're bigger chunks on the back okay no they're that are sewn chunks. into it okay yeah that go around it you well mean? that'd be worth yeah. getting that pattern yeah that's that a nice a pattern cool, that is a great cool, way to use your cool one inch quilt. squares 
or you can just take and make nine patches and do nine patches and a whole square and a nine patch oh, and a whole square and a that nine. would be pretty and it'd just be yeah just really pretty that way too so anyway now i've got my half square triangles now that was the the biggest deal of the whole thing is uh making these half square triangles so that's the most time consuming part so that's, I'm going to save that for that It's one. worth it, though. It mm -hmm. is worth oh, it to square it, those it up. It is worth it. And I'm only going to use one of these. Uh -huh. So the other one's going to go in my drawer of the appropriate size. Okay? So here I've got this. I'm going to lay this all out. And here, since I don't have a directional fabric, I don't have to worry about that. And this all laid out. Can they see it, Peter? Can they see what I'm doing over here? Or let, me not? It, let me get a little closer so they okay. can see. Okay. So she's got her vision board up there and she's looking up yeah. at that. Yeah, I've got my board right here. My book, I mean. My book. Uh, this goes like this and like this. And then this goes on the side like that and then this goes down here it looks kind of weird without the seam allowances right now it is right a now. fun block to make and and you're gonna wonder oh my gosh what how do I in do? the world <laughs> yeah what, what do i do i had to so, follow the picture to yeah figure it out. so it does show you a little diagram in the book how to do how how to put it together so we're just going to go right along with that we're going to pick up these two pieces and sew them together. Now, I can't wait for the next block, hardly, because I've got a nice little tip to share with you on that, on sewing that block. But here we go. And you know what? I kind of need a little bit more light down here on me. The gooseneck. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I sewed that. I'm gonna sew this together and I'm not pinning because I don't have any uh, seams that I have to match up there's a seam there and a seam there but they don't have to match up with anything so I'm not pinning I'm just holding that in place if I needed to use my stiletto I would my stuff is everywhere because I, I finally been figured it back. out oh gosh yeah put your top on that man yeah put my top on thank you Peter I finally figured out the value in pinning. Yeah. If you're going to take all the time to get those pieces cut out so perfectly with your wonderful Creative Goods ruler, right? why wouldn't you pin? Why wouldn't I you? I finally pin? figured it out, Dawn. Thank it you. dawned on me the other night. Thank you. And I tell you what, it's worth every pin. Okay, I'm going to pick this up. I'm not even going to press that. I'm going to pick this up. You're not going to press that? I'm not yet. Oh. Not till oh, I get... because you don't have to. Yeah, I don't have to. It's out of my way. I out can just, way. yeah, I can just sew that. And now I'm going to do these sections here. I'm going to flip that up. Not going to pin. And I'm not going to start down here where this point is. I'm going to start here where it's On the flat. flat side. So both my feed dogs can grab the fabric. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this one. A starter and an ender here. I could use my other block as my starter and ender, but I want to show you something with it, so I want to save it um, to do all by itself. So now here's all my components. I'm going to get out my clapper. I'm going to cut this dog ear off. Had I oversized this piece, it would be too big for this, and there'd be a lot more mm -hmm. of a tail, and it wouldn't be the right size when I go to sew it onto the other piece. So I'm going to cut those off. Got me a little soup pot there. I'm going to press this open. I 
many pounds of pressure are you putting down on that? Is um, it just the weight of the iron, or are you actually pressing? No, I'm pressing a little bit. Okay. Is it kind of weird to see my hand go over and out? <laughs> Is that weird? Well, it's weird that I keep handing you the iron. Oh, yeah. Is that what it looks like, that you're handing yeah, me the yeah. iron? That's pretty funny. I know. Okay. So see, that that's pretty nice. I'm going to put that back in place. And then I'm going to press this one. Now, on our spinoff, Cappy showed where she had this uh, pressing mat that came with she her. Didn't, she didn't demonstrate it. I was sad. Uh, that came with her um, rotary, her rotating her Martelli mat. mat. Yeah. And it was a it was a uh, pressing surface and oh, a, um, design board. a design board at the same time. Uh, now forgot that. Uh, yeah, I remember forgot. that. Yeah. And uh, I just love my little design boards, and they're not hard to make. They're just a piece of foam core, piece of foam core with some batting or fusible fleece or anything that the fabric's going to stick to. And then I just glued this binding on. I went ahead and uh, mitered the corner so it would look cute. But you don't even have to put the binding on. I mean, if you glue the the oh. batting down, you know, it's it's a design board. Well, you just you put this on for cuteness. Yeah. You don't have to have that. Rick rack or so, something. So, yeah, anything. Anything for or, cuteness. Or what are the little pom-poms? You could put anything you wanted on there. But I love this because... If you had to get up and iron and come back and do all kinds of things, then, and this just gives you a chance, a visual chance to not make uh, as many mistakes because yes. you've laid it out the way that you're supposed to sew it. And that, to me, just really uh, makes a difference. So now, I've got to uh, gotta press these two little pieces. And because it's laid out... then uh, my uh, seam ripper doesn't get as much use. I'm not saying I don't make mistakes. I do. But it's just, it lessens. It makes it less. Because this is so obvious of how it's supposed to go together. So now, I can't sew this piece to this because, see, it's too big. So I'm going to sew this piece onto here. And am I going to pin? No, because there's no seams. The piece I'm sewing on on the bottom has no seams, so I'm not going to do that. And uh, so now I have to, uh, oh darn, I have to sew another beginner and ender. I tell you, when I was making this at home, I, I think I ended up with like 38 beginner and enders. Because I was just playing and having a good time. And... I just see. I just realized a common theme here. What is it? You got the soup pot over on the cutting table, uh -huh. and then we got the what pot soup is this? Pot. Well, that's my uh, simmering pot, my sauce pot. The sauce pot. So we got the soup pot and the sauce pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're both enameled. Yeah, I love enamelware. That's so cool, Dawn. Yeah. It matches your iron. Yeah. So there you go. I I kind of did that intentionally. Okay, so now I do have a seam that I have to match up. So now comes the pinning. Sharp pins only. Sharp, thin pins. Sharp, thin pins. Pull that back. Make sure it's lined up all the way down into my quarter inch. That's the only place I'm going to pin is just right there. These pieces are so tiny. And now is when you could get your stiletto because see how that's come apart there get that over there see that how that's thank you see how that's come apart right there yeah. so i really need the machine grabs it yeah and, and moves, it. moves it and so i really need to get that over there and i'm just going to hold that with my stiletto i'm first going to take this pin out mm -hmm. 
and this could flop up on me. I'm going to make sure it doesn't. Then I'm going to make sure that this goes together. Now I could have pinned all this. Well, you got your stiletto. But you can use your stiletto. You know, it never gets bored after you sew those pieces together to open them up to look how nice everything I matches. I know. <laughs> you ever notice that? It just See, doesn't get tired. that's the reward. It is. That's the reward of doing all the work. It's like instant gratification. But now, if you like exercise, don't have all your little uh, small pieces. Don't have your iron here. Don't have your clapper here. Don't have your design board here. You know, ha make yourself get up and get all those things. And uh, you get exercise, but me, I'm lazy. So I just have everything right here handy. And once I sit down at my sewing machine and I have all my components cut, then I'm ready to go and look at how, I mean, you know, that is just thrilling. Let's see how impeccable That it is. is just thrilling, thrilling to impeccable. me. Impeccable. Thrilling. It is very thrilling. So now these get <clears throat> sewn on. This is the cake stand part. And the seam underneath me could kick up, so I'm going to pin that down. Pin that down. And Have it, you ever used fork okay. pens? Uh, I tried them. I didn't care for them. Um, my brain, uh, my brain just couldn't, couldn't con the concept of mm. them, couldn't deal with it. Not to say that there's not a purpose for them, because you know. But I did try them, and I just I just can't recommend them because I just couldn't couldn't deal. That's me. I just can't I can't recommend something that I don't use or that I you know that I can't grasp. Isn't that pretty? Oh see, my you, gosh. you get to revisit your fabric when you do oh. these. Because you see, these are all just one and a half, half inch squares that I've just, uh, you know, I have oh, collected, I and collected, oh and collected and collected and collected and collected and collected. Let me see your collection. See them all right here? See, just a huge collection of them. And then what just. What on earth? How do you ever find the perfect boxes for this? I made stuff? this box. Oh, okay. I made this box okay. so that it would fit. That's awesome. Isn't that fun? Wow. Yeah, I just made it so it would fit I just my... Made, I made box, boxes for my scraps. Yeah, just Don't had to make me. some baby boxes That's for my cute. scraps. Okay, cute, cute, cute. I'm going to press this open. You think that you might could sew that other piece on without pressing? No, you can't. Don't you gotta try have to. It. No, don't even do it. It's not worth it. Uh, because you're going to have to undo it if you do, because yeah. it's just not worth it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press that. Now, we're so uh, proud of our... Um, our co-worker Jennifer because on the Orophil website, now Orophil is a thread that if, we use here. Yeah, if here. you visit our Facebook page, I, I posted it this morning. Did you post it on our pa Facebook page? I posted page? it on Facebook this oh, morning. Oh, thank you for doing that. First I, thing. I might not have been able to find First it. thing, yep. Okay, so I'm uh, right after this but video. But finish what you're saying. I interrupted. Well, Sorry. anyway, on the Orophil website, uh, sometimes they... Um, uh, kind of feature different artists and this time they featured our uh, co-worker Jennifer we're so proud of her I can't wait to see it um, what's the quote called that she uh, I believe it's Juliet I could be wrong but Juliet? I think it's Juliet okay well I've not seen it so I am excited to see that and we celebrate each other here. Um, we love when one of us does good, we all do good. And um, our other co-worker, uh, Kathy, who is in the sew machine department, she's doing a quilt on the long arm. And she's been learning some things and having a good time with that. And uh, she's so proud of it, and so she should be because she's doing a really good job on that. And uh, she's doing things she didn't know she could do. And so we're proud of her for that. It's her first one. 
that she's doing on the long arm, I is believe. Is that right? Uh -huh. See how exciting that is? It's fancy, now, too. Now, look at this bulk I'm going to cut out of here. Okay? Don't leave that in. That just bulks up your, uh, your block. And these blocks are so little, the more bulk, uh, the more chance that your block's not going to sit right. It's not going to be as flat as it could be. So, now, this is the reason we couldn't oversize these pieces because there's no way to square that up. Do you see that? Once you've sewn that in, you know, this seam has to be a quarter of an inch. And if we had oversized those, it wouldn't have been the correct. It wouldn't have been a quarter stunning inch right block. there. Very Isn't that stunning. fun? And then I'm going to take this block and I'm going to sew it on here. Now, how do I know where to sew it, Peter? Oh, because I Because the corner is here and the corner has to end up completely opposite. So what I'm going to do, what, what would you do, Peter? It's probably not right. But I think what I ended up doing was folding the triangle in half. That is correct. Oh, good. You fold the triangle in half. Because I, I was far ahead and I didn't get to watch the video. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. on some of these blocks, I'm, I'm kind of struggling. Yeah, but. you were just playing it by ear, but you did right. And I'm just going to finger press that because that is a bias. Okay? So you don't want to stretch that bias. I'm just going to finger pinch it. And look, right here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's where my seams come together, right there. And that's the middle of the block. So I'm just going to just go right down and drop it below. Drop it down there. Okay. I and, think the other trick too uh -huh. that I tried on this was I moved it back and forth and then stuck it in my quarter inch um, presser foot uh -huh. until the needle bisected perfectly that intersection. Mm. I tried that too. Okay. Now the other thing is, is if you have good. a corner cutter for triangles that cut off these little corners here and it would have matched up. Is that the Creative exactly. Grids Easy Corner no, Cutter? No, that's the one you just bought that's that little triangle that okay. we use Mark, in our... Um, Marty Michelle. Yeah, that we use in okay. our ribbon runs through it. Okay, because I bought that one to and then cut I went back off. and I bought the Creative Grids one too yeah. for something else, but I don't that's remember why I bought it. That's for half square triangles. Half that's, square, okay. And, and, no, connecting corners, excuse connecting. me. Connecting corners when you stitch and flip. Okay. Remember? Yep. Okay. I think it works on bias, by our binding too, regular binding mm -hmm. for the corners. Yeah. Anytime you're Which stitching I'm gonna try and flipping, it. I'm gonna try it. Well, you got that binding. beautiful ruler that does bias binding. Did you ever find out how much binding you needed? I oh, I to... figured it out. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I meant to get back with you on that. No, that's and okay. Then I had a crisis. That's at home. okay. I figured it out. Okay, good. Um, I was getting conflicting okay. reports. Like oh, no. one said, it depends what you read. One said I needed if I had the size of a square, I needed this much fabric or. Uh -huh. Blah, 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 blah. I finally found it, though. Yeah, okay. I was able to do some digging. Okay, good. You know, you can almost find any information you need on that World Wide Web. They don't call it that anymore, do they? Do they still call it the World Wide Web? <laughs> no. What do they call it, Peter? I don't know what they call it nowadays. Uh, the Internet. Is that what they call it? I think they call it the they call it the, Are they still calling it that? I think they're still calling it's it the It's time for a name change. I'm telling you. An upgrade. Yeah, it's time for them to get out of that beta. Now, see, because those two triangles. People, I always like to say I'm, that I'm going to look it up on the Google. And people Google. always get a laugh every time I say that. Well, my friend Tammy, her dad, used to say, I want me a dot com. <laughs> I want to get me a dot com. I, I love get that. get me a dot com, he says. I love that. that I need to steal that. Yeah. That's genius. He's going to get him a dot com. Okay, now see how perfect. Had we oversized this, this would have been bigger, and we would have had to square this up. Well, we're going to square it up anyway, but you do not want to uh, cut off your little tips here. So um, when I start uh, squaring up all my blocks, that's when I will make sure that these have a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, okay? What about the teeth? What, the teeth need a quarter of an inch? Yeah. So that is really pretty, isn't That's that pretty? That's gorgeous. I love that. I just love that. Okay, now we're going to work on our other block. 
And this is the one we're going to lay out. I'm not, this is the one I really, when I got to this, I mean, when I used my board, I was so happy I had that because, uh, remember, my uh, background was directional. And so I could lay it all yes. out exactly the way I wanted it to be. So now let me watch. This is a four patch right here with the darks in the corner. So let me get that set up here. There. And then I've got another four patch down here that continues that line of darks like that. I love this block. And my lights. It's very simple. It is so fun. But it is so impressive. So fun. Okay. And so then these kind of make a little bow tie like that. This would be the perfect block to use for a whole quilt. Mm -hmm, it would. I love it. Mm -hmm. And you can make the block any size. Right. Right. Okay. And then this goes there. There, and this goes there, and this goes here. Now, now, I am a creature of habit, if you haven't learned, okay? My desk, if I, I could probably open my drawer and blindfold find everything in my drawer because everything has a home and everything's in its spot. So okay, so, need, so for an example, mm -hmm. I'm going to interrupt you. This thing right here. Mm -hmm. These things live in these certain places, right? right? This pencils, doesn't end up over here. Right, so right, So the worst right. thing I could do is come in here and mix this all up. Yeah, well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not the worst thing, but one of the worst things. Yeah. But that's how... The, the, that's the how, rotary cutter comes... This goes to the middle. But that's exactly... This goes on this side. And the little thing goes on it. And then there's an ink pen and a, a marker right there. Yeah. And here's my corner turner. I love that right there. So, yeah, all my stuff. How do you get it? How are you like that? How do you consistently keep it that way? I don't way? know. I don't know. It's just a weird thing about me. Because that's kind of cool, sew, though. I mean, it I makes it it makes it makes good to, you know, be that way. Cause, everything I mean, has a home. Yeah, you're able to reach for it and grab it without looking. But the point is, is when I sew, I don't know why, but I sew from oh, right to left. You do? Uh-huh. When I'm putting a block together. I'm always left to right. Right. Some people are. Left to right, top Because that's why you read. That's how yeah. you read. And you go okay. right to left. That's and so I cool. And go, I go here first, uh -huh. and I pick up. It's because it's closest to you. Exactly. I think that is right. And I'm just going to sew this together. And then I go across. And I'm going to do that all the way down the rows. And I know that if I'm doing this, when it comes out of my sewing machine, I'm going to know where those pieces go. Because now, that's where my brain gets messed up. I know. My brain... It can only... It I have to be only, careful. I have to be careful because when I cut them... If I, they get all mixed up. If I take it and, and put them in a certain way, then I, it'll end up getting back on my board the same way. But sometimes it's, I, I struggle doing it. Okay, I'm going to show you a little tip. Yes. I was hoping I'd get a tip that's worth the price of admission. Yes, I'm I think saying, this is going to be uh, it right here. I think this is it. Is be consistent in the way you pick up your pieces. If you're sewing a block together, uh, Peter is sewing a beautiful block together with his peaky and spikes. But Love when he it. puts the whole block together, he uh. could use this method. He could use this method. And this is just laying your block out on your design board. And my design boards, I have them in all sizes. I think I have, uh, I think this is the littlest, 10 inch all the way up to like a, uh, an 18 inch. So here we go. So now I have completed all my rows and all my sections, all my units. I call these units because they're part of the block. So these are the units that go in the block. I picked them all up. Now, the thing that most people do is they put an ender or a leader in there, and then they cut all those apart. And then they're just sitting here all piled up. 
Is that what you do, Peter? I try to stack them in my hand uh-huh. from bottom to top. So okay. the first one I cut, so I don't start on that end, uh-huh. but I start at the, the most recent end, uh-huh. and so it's on the bottom, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. Okay, that would confuse me, because yeah. these are the first ones I picked up. Okay. I know where they go. Okay. This is the first one I picked up, so I know it goes right there. Well, that's so much easier. And then this is the second one I picked that's up. That's so much easier. And so then I know. Because you can put them back. I can put them back right one here. One at a time. Where they go. Uh-huh. Look at that. And then I know oh, I wonder where that, that this one, goes. one, I know where it goes because it came from right there. It began the next row. It began the next row. And there was only two in a row. So oh, I wonder where that one goes. Well, it goes right here. And then I'm going to cut. So instead of cutting them all off. <laughs> Which I do. And getting them and all then mixed I have to, up. Yeah. Getting them all mixed up. They go back together. It's like it's like if you had a puzzle and it was all put together uh-huh. and it was in the box. Uh-huh. And instead of taking the whole puzzle out of the box put together, you crumble all the pieces up and then you try to put it back together. Well, that's the fun in making a puzzle. But that's not the fun in making a block. You don't want to have to sit so you, and think. So basically on your on your chain, you just start with the caboose and work your way up towards the engine. Evidently. I yep. don't know what that means, but yeah, go train ahead. Train reference. Yeah, a train reference. Okay. So now here's my here's my uh, last row. That way I'll be able to remember it. Okay. Here's my last row. Laying that down. I'm going to get me uh, a beginner and ender here. Sew me a beginner and ender. Before I take that last piece out. Because this is not just a beginner and ender, it's another quilt. It's another quilt. See, I'm, I'm working on another quilt. So now, here I have this already then back put back together without even having to struggle with that. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I can either sew the rows together. Mm-hmm. Or I can sew them in four patches. Okay? Whichever you're most comfortable with. If you want to sew them in four patches, then you're going to have to press them right now. Okay? If you're going to sew them in rows, you don't have to press them. Okay? So let's sew them in rows. So you just pick up first row. Second row. And this works on all size blocks. The bigger the blocks, the more important it is. The more pieces your blocks, the more components that your block has, the more important this is. And if you just need to do a section of your block, let's say you're doing an 18 or 20 inch block, you may just want to do a little section this way before you go on to another section. But keeping your blocks organized is a time saver. Now, I'm going to take off the first row again. And I'm going to press. But it's not as easy to get the pieces upside down, turned around, backwards, forwards, when you're doing it this way, because you're taking it a section at a time. You're not just willy-nilly. I use that word a lot, don't I? Willy-nilly. Yeah, willy-nilly. Um, willy-nilly. You just don't, don't, that reminds me of that Lily Benelli or whoever that song group was that lip-synced. What was that? So you don't just willy-nilly just cut them off your machine and expect them to go back in place when you've not really paid attention to how they come off your sewing machine. They're always going to come off exactly the way you put them in there. So if you have the mindset or if you can remember how you sewed them in and how they came off of your design board, 
then it's easy to just go ahead and put them back. So now look at that. Now those two rows are ready to go back on, but I've got them flipped around. Do you see that? But had I just willy-nilly them, but because I've got my design board there. Would that be a design change if you willy-nilly did it? Yeah, it would be a design change, and you can do that. That's It's your block. You do what you want. But if, let me tell you, when I was doing that one where the background was uh, directional, Wow, this was super important because I couldn't get, just because I had two half square triangles or two four patches, I couldn't get them mixed up because they'd be going different directions, you see. And so that's why it was so important that I take it off the way it came on. The way I put it on, the way I took it off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this in place. It goes right there. But before I take that last piece out, Peter... Before I take that last piece out, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this. And I'm going to go ahead and pin. And I'll tell you, there would have been a lot less pinning if I would have put together four and four. Now look, I, I have a point there, but I don't have a point there. So all I'm doing is really just lining up. And that point should be at my quarter inch, so I shouldn't have to worry about it. And then I'm doing this one, and I'm going to sew this together. have this last piece that all I have to do is press it <clears throat> well uh oh Peter's got this camera so close to me I can barely move <laughs> he wants to get the good shot of the pieces Okay, so that was good. So now I have this piece as a reference and I can just put this piece on. And yep, that's correct. So I'm gonna pin that. And I just love it. I love a, a simple four patch. And it kind of looks like a little butterfly, doesn't it? It does. Uh, or a bow tie or something. I'm going to have to scooch that one over a little bit. So much, you know, that block right there, you could do so much with, like, um, changing fabrics out for different ones. Uh -huh, and... Because, you know, when you put multiple ones of them together, they make a big, long chain. Yeah. With the little butterflies in between. Might have to experiment with that one. Yeah. That's what's fun about these four inch blocks, Peter, is that you can, you can uh, make a whole quilt just with one block. And it wouldn't, I mean, you could make a huge quilt with it, but you could make a, a small quilt. Yeah, when you find a block that makes you that happy, you just kind of want to keep you spending just time keep with it. You making it, making it, making it. Okay, now I've taken this one off. I know it's okay. My you top know how one. you said your your casket's going to be lined with one inch squares. Yeah, I said somebody could. Line could my casket. yeah 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 yeah. Somebody Except could line your casket with one inch squares. So, Are you? Yeah. Okay, so maybe on my tombstone I'll have my favorite quilt block. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> Some people put their picture. You could just have a quilt block. On yeah, there. my favorite quilt block. Uh huh. Okay, so now I've got my top one and my bottom one, so I'm not out of control. I know where they go. And it would have just been really easy to have messed up because this has four and four is eight and eight, 16 little units that make up this block. 
and it would have been easy to get those all mixed up. But because I paid attention and I and I'm a creature of habit and I know how I pick my pieces up, I paid attention to how I picked them up, how they went into the sewing machine, how I cut them off the sewing machine. Look at that. I didn't have to uh, re configure and it That's just beautiful. went together just lickety split so here we go again uh, I don't have points to uh, line up all I have are just seams so I'm just gonna go along here matching up my seams and because my seams are open they're laying good and flat and I can see right where they go how they connect to each other Man, I don't know how many beginners and enders I've got here. Maybe about 10 uh, towards my uh, quilt. So that's exciting. So no thread wasted, no time wasted. I'm on to another block, on to another quilt, on to another project. I used to not be able to do more than one project at a time, Peter. Like right now, I'm, I'm, um, you know, I've got my job at Moda that I do at home, and so I'm, I'm quilting that. I mean, I'm sewing that quilt. I've got um, my schoolgirl uh, going on. I've got my ribbon runs through it going on. I've got my uh, nine patch thing that I'm doing on the internet going on. That's four projects going on at the same time. I used to not be able to do that at all. Wow. I used to could only focus on one project and from start to finish. Mm. Because I would I would get I, I would get totally lost. But that comes with uh, practice and practice. growing and maybe the need to uh, get it done. But whatever. I think when I started teaching, that's when I had to teach myself to, you know, be involved in more than one project at a time. Wow. I do, when I make a project that's not scrappy, I do cut out uh, the entire quilt. Oh, wow. Before, nice. I, uh, before I start. Now, sometimes that's not true because sometimes I have to make a, if I'm designing, you know, you have to kind of make the block as you go and then you can kind of multiply it out. But typically, typically I like to cut the whole quilt out. But because this scrappy one is so fun, picking out the fabrics each week kind of adds to the excitement of it, don't it you does, think? It does, yeah. I do too. Now look at that. Look at those little butterflies. That's so pretty. It's butterflies on the cabin. Butterflies, yeah. And or butterflies on the basket. Okay, let's go put them with our other fab with our other blocks. What do you say? Let's do it. Oh. Let's make like a bunny and hop to it. Let's hop to it, buddy. Okay, where are your blocks? Oh, here they are. I don't know. I here, lost right them. Here, right here. I lost them. Okay, there are my. Uh, there's my Kim deal, and there's your um, uh, fabrics that you're doing. And then here's my Peter uh, memory block. Oh, gray is smashing. Yummy. Isn't that yummy? And then let's look at these. And isn't it funny that we've chose the both the same purple? It is. I think that's hilarious. That's I think funny. that's just hilarious. So there's hilarious. Peter's, there's Dawn's, and here's the one we added today. All right, put them on the So let's wall. put them on the board. The board. We're going to have to get a bigger board. Okay, this one's mine. Can we put it in for a bigger studio? <laughs> we can, but we just got this one, and we have to, we're going to have to make do. And then um, this one's yours here. This one's mine. And then this. these are my Peter one. And look at how that... Yum! Yeah. I am loving this blue background. I'm this loving blue, that blue. Man, that blue with that red dawn. Delicious. That is just awesome. That is just delicious. Can't hardly stand myself. 
Okay, and Peter, yours are coming together so nice. Yours have a really distinctive vintage look to them, I think. What do Thanks. You, do you think that it's kind of a vintage look? Uh, it's it's not really what I would call, well, maybe I would call it Civil War because it's all that era fabrics where mine kind of look more like, um, I don't know, a carnival to me. They look kind of fun and cheery uh. and... Oh, how fun would that be to, you know, the old carousels with yeah. the hand carved horses yes. that have been all hand painted. Yeah. How fun would it be to take a fo like a photo of one of those and uh -huh. use that as inspiration for a quilt? Yeah, for a quilt that would be fun because those wow. are beautifully painted colors. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So anyway, that kind of we'll call this my carousel quilt. The carousel. Kind of kind of looks like those fun <laughs> Julie tone colors. So anyway, that's today's lesson. And uh, it's block, what did we say it was? Block seven and block eight, uh, cake stand and Crockett cabin. So I hope you're staying up with us. I hope you're making four inch blocks because they sure are fun. Don't miss out on any of the fun. And if you haven't started, there's you can, you can there's still time. Go back. You, you can, can always still... go back and look at the video. We still have books. Don't we have books? We have books, and it takes no time at all to whip out three of these blocks. Yeah, yeah. So Pretty you're exciting. little, yeah, you're literally <coughs> maybe two days away from being caught up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and they. The, they take less than a half an hour to make. They're very quick. So, they come to go together yeah. fast. They cut out fast. Yeah. So, and and the fun, fun part is picking out the fabrics. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah, it is fun. And the people who are doing it completely scrappy. Yeah. I mean, oh, like yeah. real scrappy. Go Those to the blocks look amazing. Group. Yes, go to the insider. The one lady who's doing it completely scrappy. Hers look real yeah. good. Well, what about the one lady who's doing one Civil War and one Tula Pink? Yeah. Now, I haven't seen her post this week, so I I'm excited. I'm yeah, excited I can't wait to, to see. see. It. Yeah. I mean, be, it's, isn't it funny how you get. Um, you look forward to seeing the yes. other people's blocks. Yes, it is fun. Them. I love that sharing thing that we've got going on. So keep up the good work, everybody. Make four-inch blocks all day long. I love it. Bye.